Hi, uh, we have the auto parking robot set up here. As you can see, our robot like traverses through the parking space and it detects for a P or an empty spot. So it detects, it uses two uh, sensors as the camera and the LiDAR. So the camera is like looking for a P, which means it's like a valid parking spot. And the LiDAR is like looking for a space between two obstacles, which will like tell it, oh, if there is an empty spot in between two cars. So um, that's what we have here. And um, the algorithm like takes priority over P. So in the case where it detects a P and also a spot, it just goes to the P. So yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Um, so for our senior design project, we chose to do an electronically controlled variable transmission. So for the Baja car, a combustion engine output um, optimum power at a certain rotational speed of the engine. And so this curve shows that at 3300 RPM, that's when you get the most power output of the engine. So what we designed is basically a system that tracks what the RPM is of the engine and controls the ratio of the engine to the wheel. And that will be able to change what the RPM output is based on what it's reading to correct for it, basically. And so our old system on the Baja car was mechanically actuated using centripetal force. So when you push on it, the like weights will push out and push this in towards um, together. And it will create a different ratio on the belt of the system. So what we did as an alternative to the mechanical system was we have a hybrid stepper motor that actuates linearly and pushes these two clutches together and further apart. And when we detect, for example, that the RPMs are too high, then we know that we have to bring it down and the clutches will move closer together. And that changes the ratio between this and this and creates uh, a scenario where um, now there's less torque from here to here. And so it's able to bring the RPMs back up, down. And then vice versa, if it's going to have too much load, then it's going to pull back out. So that's the basics of how the system works. From the software perspective, we wrote a, or created, designed a PCB board, which you can see here. And that is where we implement the control logic. So that's on that board, we calculate, we read from a Hall effect sensor, the RPMs, and that's where we implement our PID controller. And then we have a motor controller that can actuates a stepper motor and we communicate using a RS-232 protocol. Okay, so we have a cop dog, which is an autonomous face recognition game. So basically, every we get a group of three people, and then each person sits down by themselves, and we take the mug shots, and then everyone lines up. So it runs face detection on those mug shots and finds faces, and then it trains the algorithm on that. And then everyone sits down in these chairs, and then the robot moves along. And when it finds a centered face, it'll stop and it will run face recognition on that person and then every round a criminal is decided by just a random integer between one and the number of people playing and so if it finds the criminal it goes down the line and then it goes back to the location that it finds the criminal and barks at them and then it barks <laughs> Yeah, that's the game. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have a smart home system here. Uh, basic functionality is uh, you can open and close your blinds straight from your smartphone. <clears throat> you can set it to uh, specific percentages if you'd like. So that's 41% open. We have uh, a network of nodes here. So this is a central hub that serves as the smoke sensor up here which is relaying information from the smartphone to our two nodes in the vent and in the blinds. <clears throat> Those are all feeding us back temperature and humidity values inside the house, as well as carbon monoxide, if that's detected. Um, we have a motion sensor on our blinds unit that uh, sends us a notification when there's um, motion in your room. We have our vents are automated, so if you want to set the uh, temperature in a room 
to a certain degree, it'll compare what's coming out of the vent and what the room is at and decide whether it should open or close the vent. So we want it to be hotter, the vent opens. So you can say, hey Siri, close my blind. And all goes. Awesome. Thanks. We are uh, crowdsourced rescue robots. What we wanted to do for our project was to help uh, environments where natural disasters occurred to search through the area um, more efficiently and like cheaply, you know. So um, we have built this robot um, to walk, run over like rough trains, and. We have this website with like easy like user interface to like control it. So we, I mean, it's crowdsourced because um, it could have like thousands of users um, controlling a robot in like a natural disaster area. So the robot um, works as a server um, to give like this camera feedback to the website of the user, um, and also it gives like a ga it has a gas sensor to sense if there's like a gas leak in the area. So like if there's like a collapsed building, um, it can like give those information to the rescuers. Um, also, it has a GPS. So if we were to like rounding so soaring through like larger areas, um, it could uh, give the location of the like the survivor to the rescuers in real time. Yeah. So we are FinderBot. We are a mobile autonomous robot to be used in natural disaster situations. Our robot here can um, actually navigate autonomously through buildings. Um, it uses a, a sensor called an ultra wideband radar device that can actually detect humans. So the purpose of our device is to go into a building right after a natural disaster happens. When you don't want to be sending in first responders right away, uh, you want to protect their lives just like all the victims inside. So what our robot can do is go in, autonomously navigate, and actually find victims. And that's really useful because it can help first responders and rescuers actually prioritize resources. So how it does it is it uses um, two processors. One is a high-level board. It's called an Odroid XU4, which actually um, runs all of our simulation and um, SLAM and navigation algorithms. After that, that sends a command down to a lower-level board that we designed ourselves. Um, and that actually actuates the robot's movement. So it controls the motors, and it also um, it corrects any sort of drift or anything like that. And so after that, the robot goes and it explores until it's explored everywhere that it hasn't explored yet. Um, and it, it just looks for people, and it communicates back to a base station outside of the building um, via an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. Um, and after that, it tells uh, first responders where victims are and helps them prioritize resources. So that's us. We're FinderBot. Uh, hi, my name is Kishore. I'm going to talk about MedHub. Uh, this is our senior design project. I work with Thomas Deeds, Maggie Hayes, Lauren Peterson, and Tyler Siegel. And we designed a flexible end-to-end -end patient health monitoring system. The basic idea is we have elderly patients wearing our uh, wearable chest devices as well as a blood pressure monitor. And it live streams all the data to our server. Um, and so doctors can, be, can remotely check up on their patients and, uh, and continuously see their data. They can also schedule alerts, and the patient has a panic button, which will allow them to uh, alert, the, alert the doctor of any uh, unhealthy conditions. Some of the sensors that we have on there, we're able to get an ECG signal, and then from that, we're able to extract a heart rate and a breathing rate. We also measure body temperature, um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're also uh, taking blood pressure readings and, and updating, live streaming that to our website. Um, it's a complete end-to-end -end solution, and. Again, the idea here is that elderly patients can now be in their homes um, and still have, patient, have doctors monitoring their health um, at all times. So yeah, uh, we are the Four Blind Mice, that's our team name. Uh, this is a Tom and Gary, or John and Terry, excuse me, project. And we're doing something based in image processing. So we have two robots operating, a mouse robot, Terry the Mouse, and a cat robot, John the Cat, that will be navigating through this play area right here. Um, so what we have going on is Terry, the mouse, is going to be controlled by, you know, people. People coming around and visiting Design Expo. We have them set up with a monitor right here. Um, as you can see right now, the kids really love it. Uh, so they use a keyboard, a wireless keyboard, to move the mouse around and navigate to what we call the safe zone, which is just the mouse's hiding hole. 
All the while, the cat robot, John the Cat, is looking for Terry the Mouse. What it's really looking for is the big red ears on the image. Um, so we have a continuous frame, uh, a continuous video feed of about 15 frames per second. And based on this video feed and a reference image of the ears, it calculates the probability of whether or not the ears are within the frame that it's looking at. Um, and based on that, uh, what we call a back projection, which is just a probability matrix, it will determine is it will determine not only like where the surf, where an area is of where the object might be, but its center of mass and the size of the area as well. So if the size of the area is big enough, it'll say, that's probably what I'm looking for, and it'll go hunt it down. Um, if it's not, it'll ignore it, right? Um, and based on its, the center of mass of that area, it'll determine which direction, general direction it wants to go. So either forward, left, or right. If it exits the frame, it also has something to say like, let me make a harder turn left so I can put it back into frame. Um, the way the robot's moving right now is it's pretty much set to move forward unless it sees the robot or it gets caught on a center block, which happens sometimes. As far as everything goes, it's mounted on, everything's running on Raspberry Pis and Arduino. The Arduino is actually only controlling the motors. So it'll set the speed, direction, things like that. Raspberry Pi is actually was sending all the instructions. Uh, for the mouse, it's just sending like a keyboard input. Uh, WASD, forward, back, left, right. Um, the, for the cat, it you know, makes a decision like I explained earlier, and then sends a instruction through the serial port to the Arduino, which executes like which direction it is. Um, that's pretty much it. The image processing is done in the op using the OpenCV library, using Python 3. Um, it works really well when it does work. Hi, so my name is Ashish. I'm working with the autonomous line painting robot. So essentially, our goal is we want to be able to paint lines on football fields, soccer stadiums. Think about any application where you have some sort of sports arena where you want to be able to paint lines. Or maybe even parking lots or things like that. So essentially, what we're using is a method called differential GPS. So normal GPS can give you like one meter to two meter accuracy, but with differential, we should be able to get five to 10 centimeter accuracy. So that allows us to get really accurate positions in terms of getting to our start point and then going to our end point. So currently, we are able to get about five to 10 centimeter accuracy. We can set up where we want to go and then paint until we get to that point. So right now, we have an interface set up such that you can add in all the different segments that you need. So if you think about a football field, you have a lot of different lines you have to go. So add in each line segment one by one, add in all the coordinates that you need to go, and the robot will autonomously navigate to its start point and then paint all of those lines. So as of right now, we have most of the autonomous feature working. Uh, the last thing we need to do is just fine tune some of our controls to maybe get a little bit better accuracy in terms of painting perfectly straight lines. There's an overhead camera attached to a Raspberry Pi that takes the image of the um, rink, which you can see here, and from there it uh, detects moving objects and using a common filter will track the puck and we will calculate the predicted location from zero to one and send that to an Arduino and um, using an ultrasonic sensor to detect where the robot is, uh, it will go to the correct location and block whatever your shot.